Alright you guys, so we are back for another episode of this visual novel here. I'm just going to load this where we stopped off last time. While we're making our time transport machine MK.2 Ultros TM <laughs> out of chairs and tables, the classroom door opens and an unsettling voice resounds from the other side. I'm sorry for the wait. A friend of mine was supposed to come, but he had to leave at the last minute. He asked me to cover from him today. But I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to... The voice stops as soon as it witnesses Aussie and me sitting on top of Ultros Kun TM, much to their surprise. I'm even more surprised when I discover who the voice belongs to. What in the world is going on? In shock, I accidentally kick the machine as I'm trying to get down, causing all the chairs and tables to fall onto the floor. Poor Aussie was crotched at crouched below them and didn't even see it coming. All I heard were his dying screams coming from below the mess of wood and metal. At this point, though, I was more concerned about our guest. You! What are you doing here? You know Lucy? Indian? What? What's going on here? Who is this guy, Ziva? Wait a second. Are you two friends? Of course we are. I can't I can't remember whose voice is who. I'm sorry, y'all. I gotta get it right. <laughs> See, these things are confusing to me. Of course we are. We spent a lot of time together, and when I was going here when I was going here, I'm the one who asked her if she would join the committee as an NTA representative. How do you two know each other? Know each other? This guy? I don't even know what you're saying. Instead, can someone explain why you were trying to do those chairs and why someone was screaming? So now you don't know me anymore. After what happened, yes. Oh no, I shouldn't have said that. What happened yesterday, you mean? You said nothing happened. Oh, it can't be. Don't tell me that Lucy was Mysterious Girl X. <gasps> Mysterious Shaking! The floor below us starts violently shaking. We can see the rattling of the base in the chairs and tables that are scattered across the floor. Where's my sensual cherub? What the f- Ciar promised me she was more than an 8 out of 10 and I need to see that. I didn't promise you anything. And wasn't she a soother or whatever souls? When did she move up the ranks? Ozzy doesn't seem to care about the blood stains he leaves in his wake as he inches closer to Lucy, unable to contain his curiosity any longer. He inspects her thoroughly, checking from her head to her toes. He clears his throat, ready to give the verdict. I must admit that Ciara's previous inspection rated her a bit too high. This sensual lady isn't a Ziva's level at all, which was the least I expected. Least I was expecting. But I still approve the grant her official haughty status. You need to work on those underdeveloped breasts. That's sexual harassment, dude. But the rest of your body will net you a B-grade rating, at least. <laughs> Why did I give him this voice? I like it. I have nothing else to say. Your honor, good day. And when Aussie drops the mic, I have no idea where he got it from, walks out the door and slams it shut. You are the best of your kind, Aussie. You'll never forget you. Farewell. Don't narrate it like he's died. And where are you going, Aussie? It was difficult enough getting you two to come here. Don't run away now. Is this hidden camera prank? <laughs> Is this a hidden camera prank? You can stop already. It was difficult getting us to come with you, Ziva. I thought the teachers made us come, though. Unless... <gasps> I didn't help you, though. So I want a favor in return. Can you come with me, too? Request denied, no favors. I'm so excited to go there. Isn't there any way to convince you otherwise? Come on, Ozzy, help me, even if it was one of those crazy schemes of yours. Crazy schemes? I see there's no other way. Oh no, now I get it. Everything makes sense now. You've had this plan since the very beginning. You wanted to make it look like you did us a favor, but we ignored you, so you had to try to use your charms on Ozzy to convince him to race me. I dare say you had even planned to have Aussie do something we'd been punished over. If everything went your way, you could make us join the committee as a favor to you for saving us. 
But because you failed the first time, you had to find another way to make it happen. Admit it, you're a traitor, Judas. Um... Well, Lizzie allowed me to introduce you properly. Don't you dare ignore me. Please, Indian. We have much more important matters to attend right now. Do you really want to make Lucy wait while we continue bickering? She's probably the best girl I know. It would be very impolite if, uh, on our part to do that to her. Didn't your mother ever teach you any manners? Besides, aren't I the only one aren't I the only one who can clean up miscommunications between you two? That's blackmail. And that's when Ziva explained everything that happened over the past couple of days to Lucy. The odd emails, the playground, breaking into Lucy's apartment, showing up for basketball practice. I had to fill in some of the details and Lucy didn't seem completely convinced. But because Ziva's confirmed everything, she chose to believe it for now. Who would have guessed that those two are actually friends? I don't know if it's just by chance or not. Everything is too surreal for me to process all of it right now. Especially when I still don't understand why Ziva insisted on Aussie and I joining the committee. That's just another mystery that I'll have to get to the bottom of when I have the opportunity. I guess that explains everything. But it's hard to believe, you know. It's not that I don't trust you, Ziva, but I can't say the same about, um, McDonald Duck or whatever you are. How many copyrights does it just violate by calling me that? I hope... <laughs> You're funny, whoever made this. I told you last time that I was using a fake name. My real name is Siren. Siren Indian. Whatever. I'm Lucy Aurea, by the way. But it seems like you already knew that. One of my teammates told me your name during the game. That's all. I didn't know your last name. It sounds lovely. That still doesn't explain why you disappeared yesterday. Well, you can discuss that amongst yourselves. I've done my part. Don't worry about the committee for today. We'll just have to reschedule it for another day. We're missing some of the other members anyways. And I just spilt my drink on my leg. Y'all, it's, it's everywhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. I'll go look for Ossie and make sure he's still alive. You guys can keep chatting here. Good luck. Yeah, fine, run. I'll get you later. Suddenly, it's just Lucy and I, left alone together in a really awkward situation. It's just normal for people who've only just met to have nothing to talk about. But this is just abnormal. I don't know what else there is to say. Lucy doesn't seem to have any connection with those weird emails at all, and I'm not even sure I still want to find out the truth behind them anymore anyways. I guess I should probably tidy up the mess I made earlier. Is that okay with you? Do as you wish. Oh. <laughs> Lucy gives me a totally dry answer as a way of showing her dissatisfaction with me. However, once I begin cleaning up my mess, she joins in and helps me. I told you I wanted to speak with you, didn't I? Why did you leave? You mean during the basketball match, right? I didn't want to play anymore, and I didn't know you'd come back or not. It didn't make sense to stay. You could have at least come to the infirmary before leaving. It wasn't that bad in the end, right? I didn't think it was necessary. Nah, I just broke a rib and I had to sit out for the rest of the match, but it wasn't no big deal. What? A broken rib? And you say that's no big deal? That's just what I told the coach so I could take a few weeks off from playing. In reality, I'm fine. Nothing happened, so no broken rib. Lucy taps on her chest, prideful of her fortitude, even though she had just admitted that she had lied to her whole team about getting a serious injury. I'm more worried about how you forgot about our bet. Bet? Ah, that bet. You stalked me, broke into my apartment, harassed me during our match, and then insulted me. Then ran away from our bet. Do you think I'm happy about that? Okay, you did win that bet, but I think Ziva already explained everything, didn't she? It was all one big misunderstanding. Lucy smirks for a few seconds before deciding how to respond to my statement. We also talked about how you had to prove to me that I could trust you. You need to fulfill some requirements. What Ziva told me was really nice and all, but what if she's covering for you? I can't take your word at face value. I need more than that to believe you. 
So you plan on taking advantage of the situation since you won that bet? <laughs> Not exactly. I'm genuinely curious, you know. Not to mention all of the problems you have caused for me. What are you going to do with those, eh? I could even sue you if I really wanted to. This is kind of lame, y'all. Let's not get carried away. No need to involve the law. Why not? Do you think I'm bluffing? Alright, alright. It's, if it's compensation you want, then I've got something. What if I show you a place where you can draw in peace? What? Drawing. You like drawing, don't you? I saw you doing it the other day. Evidently, you don't have a better place to do it. So how about I tell you about a place that would be perfect? Click. Where'd you get that idea? The other day was honestly a one-time thing. I don't... For some reason, Lucy tries to deny something obvious. It's weird. At first she acted like she didn't know me. And now she's refusing to admit that she likes drawing. She's contradictory. The scraps of paper I saw in the garage on the day you were drawing in the playground had more than doodles on them. It's like they were a part of a story or a comic. One draws, one draws outside to capture landscapes, not to create comics. At least no one with as many scraps as you had left behind. In your room, I couldn't find any of your art supplies, even though it took you less than a minute to get in and out of your apartment. You were definitely in a rush, too, since you left your bedroom light on. But you still were very careful to hide your art supplies for some reason. You returned home shortly afterwards, so whatever you went to do, you didn't want anyone else to know about it. You were so cautious to hide it at all, hide it all, even though you weren't gone for more than five minutes. I don't know why you're hiding your artistic hobby from your family. I think you're pretty good at drawing. Being embarrassed about it doesn't make sense. In any case, an abandoned playground isn't really the most comfortable or safest of places. Not if you want to draw properly. Lizzie doesn't respond. Stunned, she doesn't know how to react. Maybe I, should have, should, I shouldn't have said anything about it. I'm trying to clear my name, but it seems like I might have just bit too, been a bit too thorough in my analyzation. Okay, let's say that I'm interested. I can't go and follow you around after what's happened. I've already told you that I need to trust you first. How about we take care of the first and then we'll see. I shrug. I don't know what she's thinking, but it can't be worse than what sh what's already happened. As you wish. What should I do now? Do you promise what you won't be Do you promise that you won't back out this time? I promise I won't back out. Really? No matter what? Look, not everyone does, but I always fulfill my bets and promises. Good, good. Then come with me. If you dare. Mmm. One thousand nine. That's a new background. Holy shit. There's nobody around. With my hands stuffed in my pockets and my eyes darting around, I casually lean on the door of the teacher's lounge. After I confirm that no one else is around, I quietly turn the doorknob. Oh, it's locked. Unexpectedly, the door of the lounge is locked. On the bright side, it also means that nobody's inside, which only makes things easier in the end. Let's see what we have here. I shake the knob a little and decide on the best course of action. I open my wallet and take out my ID. I swiftly push it through the door crack, which easily unlocks the door. Once I'm inside, I look in one of the cabinet drawers like Lucy had instructed me, and I find a sort of key, a set of keys. I grab them and get out of the lounge. Wow, that was fast. I was scared there for a second when the door was locked. How did you manage to get it open? It's easy as long as you have credit card or plastic ID on hand. You'd be surprised by the amount of doors you can open that way, especially if they're old. And I always carry a lockpick with me in case that doesn't work. Or I also could have used a bump key. The art of lockpicking is very beautiful. Jesus, dude. You, you got awful. That explains how you got into my house. Who knows where you learned that? I've already told you that the door was already opened. I didn't pick the lock. Of course, schmuck. Of course. You aren't in any position to talk after what you asked me to do. How did you know that the keys were in there? And what do you plan to do with them? To serve justice. What does that even mean? Oh, we've seen this one before. Okay. 
Lucy leads me outside. She brings me out near the entrance and into a parking lot. It's empty aside from the couple of parked cars. Look, I used to park my bike right here in the bike racks. At the beginning of this school year, one of the teachers decided to purchase a new car. Not a regular car, but a big one. Really big. It turns out that his parking space was in front of the bike racks, making it harder to get the bikes in and out. Let's not talk about how teacher didn't give a damn, and every time he'd park, he'd always hit the bike racks in one way or the other. So I forced to give up my wheels and start walking instead, but I don't want the end of the year by letting him I don't want to end the year by letting him get away with it. I presume di I I, <laughs> I presume diplom diplomacy diplomacy hasn't worked very well. Why don't you chain your bike up somewhere else? Where? This place is busy during the mornings, and you never know where you'll be able to park. Plus, I've already made up my mind. Here or nowhere. She presses one of the buttons on the key, and the headlights of a large vehicle blink on. I almost mistook it for a monster truck, making Lucy's compliment more understandable. Complaint more understandable. What are you going to do with it now? You don't need the keys to scratch the body of it. Sit down. I want to show you something. Lucy invites me to sit shotgun. What's she planning, I wonder? I'll be the first to admit that I love pranks, but I can't imagine this girl being that kind of person. I'm pretty curious about it, so I decide to go along with whatever she wants to do. I take my seat as she goes around the other side and sits in the driver's seat. Can you tell me what you're going to do with this car now? You haven't figured it out yet? We're stealing it. What? Ah! Holy crap, it's some stiff. In the time it took me to blink, we sped out of the school's parking lot onto the street. I've always considered myself a prankster, but this is too much. Too much, I mean, we're stealing a damn car. What are you doing? I told you, I want to test whether or not I can trust you. You're the only one, there's only one way to do it properly. You can't trust someone you don't consider a close friend. And I don't believe that two people can be friends until they share a secret. What do you think? Will you be my accomplice? There's no better secret than this. You could have told me before stealing the car. <laughs> I wanted to see how much it would take before you asked. In the end, it's true that you're always, you always fulfill your promises. Or you're just stupid. Okay, whatever you say, but slow down. You're going the wrong way in the roundabout. I'm trying to, but it's hard. I know which one is the gas pedal, but I can't dis distinguish between the normal and the super brake. What the hell is a super brake? I don't know. There are three pedals. The gas pedal, the brake, and other which has to be the super brake. The clutch. That's the clutch. Dutch. Why would they be here? Oh my god. This is insulting. I feel like that's that's really insulting to me. <laughs> Uh, clutch. You don't know what that is? How did you manage to start the car in the first place? Women's intuition or something like that. I don't know. Lucy makes such a sharp turn that if the streets were busy, everyone in our path would have been slaughtered. After skidding, the car flies into the air with the finesse of a rat, likely also breaking the suspension and lands in an empty vacant lot. The truth is that there weren't. we aren't really going to steal it. More like borrow it. I don't have a license, so I don't need the car for anything myself. You don't say. I never would have imagined that after seeing how well you drove on two wheels. <laughs> don't be like that. We're only serving justice. I don't have it yet, but in a couple of months I'll be 18 and can plan on getting it then. Have you ever heard about future investments? Same thing here. Yeah, not really worth it. It's always this little cloud view we got here. It's cute. That's cute, yo. Uh, too late. You're already involved. It rained yesterday, right? That's why the vacant lot is muddy. The plan in this is to circle around a couple of times and leave the car covered in it. I can think of thousands of easier ways to dirty a car, if that's what justice intends. None of the none of those are as fun. Uh -huh. I'm close to making the interior of this car as dirty in the inside purely from motion sickness. The driver's obnoxious laughter isn't helping me at all. A few minutes, although it felt more like months, 
a torture later, and Lucy is bored of circling. The car is now in a completely unrecognizable, dirty state. At least now it seems like Lucy has gotten the hang of driving, but it's a pity that our luck runs out as soon as we return into the main streets. Hey! Lucy says with a complete casual tone. Yeah? What's that behind us? I take a look and answer her in a relaxed tone. The cops. Silence consumes the car. Lucy tries to break it, but it completely unsuccessful. What's he doing with his hand? Signaling, signaling you to stop. I see. I think now is a good time for us to switch seats. Stop the car. With the normal or super brake? Some people <laughs> say looks can kill, but not mine. My facial expression is more like an ode to the apocalypse. My gaze focuses on the rearview mirror as my stomach enacts a coup, 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 coup d'etat. I don't know. Out of the police vehicle emerges a figure. Whatever happened to the fat police officers with greasy donut laden hands? It's not like I have anything against six foot six inch tall baldies that are as large as bodybuilders. But it's not good for my mental health or heart to face the final boss during the first level. <laughs> That's funny. For a second, I'm unsure if he wants to lean in through the window or rip the sunroof off with his bare hands. Whoa. They actually drew an officer. Interesting. Are you aware that having a car this dirty makes it impossible to see your blinkers and license plate? Hey, where's the driver? Between how poorly I act under pressure while having to improvise and my stomach reenacting the French Revolution, I missed an important detail. Lucy is gone. I think I can hear the car starting to break down under the fingers of the mean-looking officer. I may have been joking about the sunroof before, but it all started becoming more plausible. I can hear the guillotines going off in a place de la Concorde when to my, car, my ear comes a soft whisper. Repeat what I say if you want to get out of this alive. What? I guess that the sound is coming from behind me. From that, it's safe to assume Lucy is lying down in the space between the front and back seats. With a car as big as this, there should be enough space there for her. Don't play dumb with me. Where's the driver? I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I've watched more than enough Japanese cartoons to know that the aura given off by this officer is no good. It's probably because he's bald, and then I can't tell what his power level is, but it's likely quite high. I left that seat free on purpose because I've been looking for you all night. Probably only because I don't have a better idea, but without overthinking it, I start repeating Lucy's words. I left that seat free on purpose. I've been looking for you all night. The officer raises an eyebrow. Do you know why the car's like this? I went to the countryside to look at the stars all night. The car ended up like this because I went to the countryside to look at the stars all night. And now look, it's bright as day. I can't believe I'm doing this. The revolution may have ended, but now I have Napoleon Bonaparte expanding his territory behind my abdomen, and I can't hold him back any longer. I've put in so much effort, and I've finally... I've put in so much effort, and I've finally found Uranus. Found Uranus! No, I meant, um... My mind is so blank that I notice the small vibrations coming from behind my seat. Lucy can barely contain her laughter. My vision clouds. The bulky guy looking in through the car window seems to grow taller than before, and his eyes turn blood red. I, who has always lived free of any sins, lies. So this is the conspiracy that the corrupt government and law enforcement came up with to get rid of me for good. Still lying. I always knew they considered me a threat, lies. But for it to come to this? I would rather spend the days at home playing video games, lies. No, wait, this is true. I hope humanity remembers me as a hero for what I've dedicated my entire life and efforts to. The protection of the Vietnamese Sayola and its rights? He doesn't even know what that is. <laughs> Although there may be still be a way, I really a really cliche solution, the oldest trick in the book. It's not like it can get any worse, right? Joking, I'm joking, this is a hidden camera prank, see? I raise my hand up to the nearest sun visor and flip it down as you can try to indicate that there's a camera hidden behind it. Of course there's nothing actually there. But thanks to my experience as a magician, it's actually pretty easy for me to make others believe otherwise. It's all about how well you can act and lie. It's all in the wrist. The beast frowns suspiciously, then also seems to calm down a little bit. 
It's going to air on one of the popular comedy websites. It looks like there's no driver, but I can drive it from here. Cool, right? Please like, share, and subscribe so I can live off the views from the YouTube cache. Cal dies, and I have to go back to living in my mother's basement. Thank you very much. Here's my driver's license, you see. I take out my wallet while trying to control my sudden Parkinson's fit and bend over the driver's seat as I hand over my driver's license for the officer to examine. It may just be an adrenaline thing, but to me it looks like he's going to burn my license under the pressure of his fingertips. He sighs, something I personally envy, considering that I don't have any oxygen left in my lungs until he gives me my ID back. Alright, but I don't, don't do anything like this again, okay? The officer nods his head and leaves. I bid him farewell in shock. When he's far enough away, I let out the biggest sigh I've ever sighed in my entire life. Everything's okay in the end. Who would have thought? Lucy reappears from the back and takes my driver's license out of my lifeless hands. I don't say anything, and when I come back to my senses, I cover my face and try to compute everything that has happened, or transpired. Although my reaction isn't what anyone would expect. I can't believe that guy fell for that immature lie. Oh my god. <laughs> Lucy and I start laughing our asses off together. It had been a pretty dangerous situation, but we couldn't stop laughing. I thought you were angry for, so re for a second, you know? <laughs> oh, I am. Don't be mistaken. But being able to get out of that was such a bad lie. It's so ridiculous. What I don't understand is why you're laughing. What's wrong with you? Do you realize that you w you've just stolen a car or what? Well, there's a small detail I might have left out. That story I told you about the teacher is real. But that teacher is actually my father. You're stealing your dad's car? Are you crazy? We have a special relationship. We pull pranks on each other all the time. I might have done outdone myself this time, but he'll probably find it hilarious. A little weird, eh? Some things are so easy to say, but the most simple ones can be the most difficult. She lowers her voice for a second, and in reaction, I turn around to look at her. But she avoids my gaze and returns to her previous demeanor. To tell you the truth, I wanted to do something unexpected to see how far you'd go. Ziva has actually told me about you before, you know. The weird guy that writes in his notebook and always gets into trouble. I see she wasn't lying about the latter, at least. Looks like we have something in common. What do you think? This is what I meant by justice. You break into other people's houses and stalk them. I steal cars. You don't have any more reasons to be wishy-washy around me like before now, right? Lucy smiles. She's a lot more relaxed now that, according to her, we're on the same level. The philosophy of committing a crime to understand criminals better seems stupid to me. Wait. The philosophy of committing a crime to understand criminals better seems s stupid to me. Foolish even, but she seems convinced. What I didn't plan on is you having this driver's license. Lucy waves the piece of plastic between her fingers, looking at it while trying to change the subject. Oh my, it seems that your birthday is next week. Happy early birthday. Stop snooping and give it back to me before you lose it here. What? I don't understand it, it is why it says that you're 19 years old. Aren't you the same classes as Ziva? Snoop? I repeated a grade while ago. Nothing special. Wow, you were serious? You must be kind of stupid after all. I appreciate that deep analysis, but shouldn't we bring this car back already? Your father must have realized that it's missing by now, especially considering how large and hard to admit is to miss. Don't worry. At this hour, he's probably fooling around somewhere. He's a good man, but still irresponsible. Is that something you know for sure, or is it another gut feeling? <laughs> a bit of both. Mental note, this girl's dangerous. Oh well, at least the Battle of Waterloo is over. What do you mean? Without incident, since I'm now behind the wheel, we managed to safely return the vehicle to its parking spot. I carefully placed the keys back in the drawer I'd originally found them in, imagining the face of that unfortunate man paying the price of his daughter's justice. When I get back to the school gates and meet up with Lucy again, she's facing away from me, distracted by something. Ah, that was really fast! It's not like I went that far anyway. It's never far enough when it comes to you, Ju Juan. Don't give me nicknames whenever you feel like it. I told you that my name is Siren. Now what? We're even now, right? You wanted proof that you can trust me, and now you even have something that you can blackmail me with. So don't keep complaining. Really? To be honest, I'm not really convinced yet. 
I'm still going to need something more to trust you. That's your problem now. I've already done my part. But that's not true, jo Johan. It wasn't Johan. It was John. My name is Siren. C-R-N. Run? I don't know. John was a pseudonym that I came up with to escape. But I clearly said you had to fulfill some requirements. Requirements. That's a plural. Don't you see? This was only the first requirement. The second is for you to show me that secret place you mentioned earlier. The third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. We'll see. If a genie gave you three wishes, normally you'd want to ask for more, am I right? I raise a finger questioningly, trying to figure out how to react to such nonsense, but she's right. For some reason, I was thinking that her intentions were pure, and then I ended up getting myself into this mess. Cat got your tongue? If you have nothing left to say, then let's get going already. Normally in these types of situations, I'd react by sending her straight to hell and angrily punching the closet wall I could find, or vice versa. Oh, like you punch a woman? Is that what you mean? Wow. That's nice. It really, it was really stupid of me to do all of this, but as I've already said, I always fulfill my promises and bets. I'm not going to go back on my word now. I can't live with a clear conscience if I know that I have an unfulfilled promise left. It doesn't matter if that promise is totally unfair and if it deceived me with its tricky wording meaning to take advantage of me. Okay. You did say requirements, so let's settle on a limit right now. Alright, a limit. Considering I've already spent two, it would be unfair to leave it like that, even though I didn't know there was a limit. How about a limit of five total? Three more requirements? Are you crazy? You mentioned a genie a bit ago. Then three? That's plenty of favors. How about we meet in the middle and leave it at four? Bah, okay, four. Who cares? Great, because I would have accepted two or three, two in fact. I'm surprised that we even renegotiated it. Any sane person would have assumed that I was joking. I wasn't being serious at first. I just wanted to tease you with the requirements thing. But if you're so gener generously offering, then I won't refuse. I suddenly realized how much of a fool I've been being over this odd girl. I fell for all of her tricks. A free fall without a parachute. An unclear destiny. I lose my composure and my usual smug behavior is torn away from me. I've been defeated by my equal. Our conversation doesn't make any sense. The stuff about the requirements doesn't make any sense. When my patience ends, I don't get angry, but instead vulnerable. I'm not the kind of person who gets caught up in my anger. I'm mostly cool-headed in every situation, but when there's a crisis, my will bleeds and I end up agreeing to anything that comes my way until I eventually find the best moments to escape all of it. Now would be a good moment to make a run for it. Nevertheless, it's true that I'm a man of my word, not a liar. For better or worse, I have to keep going until I fulfill that which I am responsible for. I've already told you that I fulfill all of my promises. Even if it was a trap, I'd still honor it. And, well, whatever happens, happens. In the end, maybe you're sincere after all. I thought you were different. Not that this is bad either. Lucy flashes a cunning smile, a mixture of dark and per pernicious joy that I somehow find appealing. Well then, gentle sir, you still have a special place to show me. How about we hit the road now? On the outskirts of town, beyond the park near the abandoned neighborhood, there is a small, unfinished library. It isn't actually only a library, but also a cultural center with a special rooms to practice painting, music, and ceramics, among other things. They never managed to finish it, so one of the wings of the building is in ruins. The other wing is in perfect condition, and except for the lack of water and electricity, it's an ideal hangout. As we stand in front of the abandoned building, I pop open the hardy door, not by pushing it, but by picking the lock. When we get inside, I show Lucy the way to what was, until now, my secret hideout. Alright, you guys, I'm going to stop here for this episode because, of course, like my voice gets real tired and I'm trying to drink some stuff. And um, thank you so much if you've gotten to this point. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and stay, stay tuned for the rest of this novel. I do enjoy reading the story and I've got a bunch of novels saved in my Steam account. But uh, I just wanted to bring you along with me. And I hope you'll subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video and tell me what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys. Bye.